Ladies and gentlemen, it has happened. Breaking news. Never did I think in a million years that John Schneider and Pete Carroll would grow a pair of you know what and fire that man, Brian Schottenheimer. Your Seattle Seahawks will have a new offensive coordinator in the 2021 22 season. And it's never felt so good. Now, before I continue and talk about how I feel about this situation, well, you could know, you could see how I feel. I'm pretty damn happy. But uh, let's just go ahead and uh, say what needs to be said. First and foremost, Brian Schott uh, Schottheimer has been our coordinator for what three years now. Uh, thank you, Shotty. You have been the best, uh, not the best, but you know what you brought to this team. We're, we're thankful for that. And uh, you know, hopefully, you go out there and get a, a different job with a different team, get a different opportunity. He will, you know, especially after the, uh, the first half of that season and what we saw with him. But thank you, Brian Schottheimer. Uh, I wish you the best. But obviously, things didn't work out because of uh, philosophical differences. But yeah, we're sitting here now and I feel like we could definitely move on and we could get better with the team just because I, I man, I, I didn't want Schottenheimer in for another season after his end of the year press conference and they were saying, well, Ryan Schottenheimer scored the most amount of points and or helped score the Seahawks, uh, help, um, help the Seahawks score the most amount of points in franchise history during a single season. He's definitely going to be back. I was worried because I was like, listen. We're doomed to make the same mistakes. Brian Schottenheimer has been our coordinator. And we've had this weird, weird, weird problem with not being able to find the balance between run and pass. Uh, we didn't have an identity in offense for the last three years. Did we want to be a pass team or run team? Once one of those stopped working, we'd abandon it. You know, uh, we would abandon it immediately and then go back to the other. Like if the running game didn't work for like a couple weeks, we're like, oh, uh, a couple weeks, we're like, okay, okay, it's not working. And we'll go to the pass. And we're, we went through this weird like dynamic where it's like we're a pass team, then a, a run team. Team and it went back and forth we had no identity now hopefully we could find a coordinator out there that'll be able to give us that identity take some load off of Pete Carroll's back and then maybe Pete could focus more on the defense while we could have a young offensive coordinator really take the reins off of the um, the reins of this offense and try and take us to the next level so I do want to go ahead and talk about one guy that the the Seattle Seahawks have been looking at uh, what's his name St Shane Steichen or Steve Steichen, Steichen, whatever that guy's name is, the offensive coordinator for the LA Chargers, 35, year, uh, 35 years old. Uh, the LA Chargers were, I think, top 10 in passing yards this year. And yeah, they were top 10 in passing yards this year, obviously, with Justin Herber, Herbert at the rain. One of the most tal uh, talented quarterbacks out of that draft class, maybe the most talented. Uh, hard to say because Burrow got injured, but. The, the Chargers offense was good. I mean, the Chargers offense definitely wasn't the reason why they were losing a lot of those games. And I, I do want to go ahead and say, yes, while the Chargers were very good offensively, they had a lot of weapons. You know, Keenan Allen's a weapon. Mike Williams is a weapon. Uh, Jalen Guyton, some speed they have. Uh, didn't get to play a lot of snaps, but I'm saying they have a lot of speed. Makes them with a lot of size, like Mike Williams, some speed. Jalen Guyton, former wide receiver for the Cowboys. And then you also see the running backs, you know, Austin Eckler. Uh, they were running pretty well with Austin Eckler while he was playing. You know, he didn't play the, the whole season. He was injured. And then they had guys like Joshua Kelly come in and Kalen Balaj and all that. Um, but in general, the, the Chargers offense was pretty decent. They were pretty good. Uh, but one of the reasons why we're thinking about bringing this guy in, and also a guy from the XFL, I'm not really familiar with him, so I'm not going to touch on him too much until I do some more research. But um, one of the reasons why we're thinking about bringing a guy like him in is because apparently we want to run the ball more effectively. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I still think that if we're going to keep Russell Wilson and, and try and, uh, you know, pay him that much amount of money or going to pay him the, that much money, uh, that much money, we got to, you know, make this uh, offense about uh, Russell Wilson. Because if not, that's a waste of $31 million. doesn't make any sense to pay him that much if our team's going to be a running team. Now, he said run the ball more effectively. So maybe that means we could still be a team that's based around Russell Wilson, but just try and find a way to have better schemes to run the ball, but not dedicate our whole offense to running the ball. And maybe that's what he means, but hopefully that's what he means because I really hope he doesn't mean uh, changing his team completely to the running team, even though he did say that in the end of the year press conference where he said he wants to run the ball more. Um, you know, like I said, I still think next year we have to surround uh, Russell Wilson with the right amount of weapons and uh, right amount of uh, right pieces to, to maximize this offense. So if you look at the Chargers running game, 
since obviously we're bringing this guy in to be a running team. I think they're ranked 18th in total rushing yards, a little over 100 uh, rushing yards a game. Um, you do have to put in the fact that Austin Eckler didn't play the whole season. Even though Austin Eckler isn't really even that guy that's going to sit there and pound the ball 25 times a game, right? he's more of a receiving back. He's going to sit there and catch passes. A uh, fast guy out of Colorado. Uh, but, you know, they still had guys that could run the ball like Joshua Kelly and Kalen Balazs. Now, I'm not sitting here and trying to say Joshua Kelly and Kalen Balazs are, are, you know, outstanding running backs, but they are, you know, viable running backs that have been in this league for a while. Kalen Balazs coming from Miami, and then we know what Joshua Kelly could do. Um, and, and they were still 18, so they weren't very effective running the ball, but the offensive line had some, had some questions on the Chargers. So we don't really know what this guy has, and it, it's going to be one of those situations where we kind of have to take a shot and a risk. Uh, on, on what he could bring he's a young guy hopefully he has some young ideas and, and you know um could bring something new to this offense because Schottenheimer was about to reach his 50s this guy hasn't even hit his 40s yet he's a young guy like I said I wanted this young offensive coordinator to come in for a while now almost like how Atlanta did with Shanahan and um you know the the, the Redskins at the time did with McVay so it's we're in a situation now where I'm scared. I'm legitimately scared because I don't know a lot about this guy. The next offensive corner we're going to get, it, we're probably not going to know a lot about the guy. Everyone's saying sign Eric Bieniemy. It's not happening. Bieniemy's already offensive coordinator for the Chiefs. We're not going to, Bieniemy's not going to leave one offensive coordinator job for another offensive coordinator job, especially when he's with Kansas City and Patty Mahomes and Andy Breed and that city's won a Super Bowl. The only way he's leaving Kansas City is with a pretty decent head coaching offer like Houston Texans, which he's, I, I'm pretty sure he's getting an interview there. So, um, yeah, so we're probably going to get offensive corner no one's really heard of, which is fine. Uh, I just want someone young, someone with some new ideas, and someone who has a little bit of a track record, just so we're not getting a guy that's completely fresh. A guy like Steichen, or whatever that guy's name is, um, he has a track record. You know, he's the coordinator for the Chargers, and uh, like I said, the Chargers offense was good, but you do have to keep in mind that they have a very good young quarterback in Justin Herbert and plenty of weapons and a, a decent depth in the running back position. So it wasn't like he was taking some team like the Washington football team to the top 10 type of offense where he's working with, you know, Terry McLaurin as his only weapon and he's, you know, interchange with Dwayne Haskins and Alex Smith all year and Kyle Allen gets some snaps and the Heineke comes in and then their tight end spot is a former quarterback and then somehow he makes it work. It's not like that. The Chargers offense was full of weapons. Um, so we'll see. I mean, hopefully it brings some new flavor, some new life into this offense, whoever we end up getting. Maybe it isn't him. Maybe it's someone else, but that's just been the name that's been thrown out. So... Yeah, guys, I feel like uh, the Brian Schottenheimer firing was necessary. Uh, our our offense is boring and not creative with Brian Schottenheimer. Hopefully, this guy brings some new life into this offense. So, guys, give me what you, uh, your opinion on this uh, situation. Are you happy that Brian Schottenheimer, uh, Shoddy, I don't know why I keep stuttering, is fired? Or do you think that we maybe should have kept him for another year, especially with how our offense looked in the beginning of the season? All right, guys, please like uh, drop a like. Comment what you think, guys. Drop that sub or hit a sub button. Whatever you got to do to hit that sub. I'll see you guys later. Until next time, stay safe.